Hey guys, it's SadyW, and today we're going to be talking about microcode and how it relates to CISC and RISC. So let's start by going over what CISC and RISC are in depth. CISC and RISC are two kinds of instruction sets that are designed to make hardware as fast as you can possibly make it. The idea of these two separate areas goes back to the 1970s and 60s. As circuitry got smaller and smaller, people initially tried to make computers faster by adding more circuits. And that makes a lot of sense. If you have an opportunity to put more circuits into a smaller space in an ALU, why not add a physical divider or a multiplier? Or you could have control unit hardware that just lets you jump to a subroutine with one instruction. Adding extra circuits to do extra functions like this is called CISC, or Complex Instruction Set Computing. If you need to jump to a subroutine or add two floating point numbers together, there's hardware in the CPU that can do that function for you immediately. The problem is that with a simple clock, the clock is only as fast as the slowest instruction. So even if you can do these more complicated functions, the clock speed on the whole would not be as fast as it would be if you neglected some of those more complicated instructions. Computers that neglect these complicated instructions to have a faster clock speed are called RISC or reduced instruction set computers. Rather than doing complex instructions with hardware, RISC computers look to solve them using software. Since a machine that is Turing complete can solve any problem, you can just do the complex functions in roughly the same amount of time as a CISC computer. But a clock speed doesn't necessarily have to be one particular speed. It could be made to vary depending on what instruction is being done. If the processor has to do something slow, that clock cycle is made to take longer. But if it has to do something fast, it can use a faster clock and move on to the next instruction as soon as the calculation is finished. So the speed of these two instruction sets ends up being about the same. CISC is slightly faster for complex instructions, and RISC is slightly faster for simpler instructions. But even though you can get RISC computers to get similar speeds to CISC computers as complex instructions, that doesn't mean that they will always be programmed in the fastest way. So for common complex instructions, you want the programmer to have access to pre-programmed algorithms that they can just call at any time. So RISC computers have subroutines stored in their ROM that do all of the complex functions that you're probably going to need. These programs are called microcode, and the set of instructions in microcode that the computer has available to it is what is actually its instruction set. We've used architecture and instruction set somewhat interchangeably changeably up to this point, but now we have to differentiate them. Architecture is the hardware that a computer has available to it, and the instruction set is the list of instructions that that architecture can do. Now for our graphics card, we're going to be using a RISC processor, and then we're going to be giving it microcode to do the complex graphical functions that we need it to do. The actual hardware is going to be pretty simple for us to make, and so the majority of this series is actually going to be programming microcode for the processor. But now that we know how these two instruction sets work, we have to consider that clock cycles per second is no longer an accurate way to measure the speed of a processor. Because for RISC computers, it takes more than one clock cycle to do an instruction. So to compare them, what we're going to have to do is use a common instruction as a baseline. We can measure the speed of the computer in terms of how many of that kind of instruction the computer can do in one second. The most common measurement for this is a floating point operation. You've probably heard the somewhat silly name that this unit of measurement has before. Flops, floating point operations per second. So now with the ability to compare speeds of processors, we have noticed that one of these types of instruction sets is actually slightly faster than the other. It turns out that RISC processors tend to be ever so slightly faster than CISC processors in the grand scheme of things. It has a kind of beauty to it that the really simple processor is all you really need to make the fastest possible processor, and that your first attempt at a simple redstone computer might have been the most advanced one you've ever built if you program it properly. And with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.